We're back in the workshop continuing our build of the Roby Senior Smart Robot. Right now we're just going to be focusing on the base of the robot, which is where we're going to put a lot of the electronics and sensors to work out the autonomy of the robot before reattaching this to the robot himself. This is a base attached to Roby and this is a base separated from the robot's body. So we'll be focusing on this, getting everything working with the Arduino, the power and the sensors, and then we'll put it all back into our robot later on. So here we have our robot base prototype. On this side is a robot base as it comes out of the robot with no modifications. Here we have the wire lead that came out of the robot body down into the motors. So control was handled through here. I've taken off the motor top here so we can see down inside and we have our gear system in place and two motors. Now when we deal over here with the motor driver, just keep a note that my motor driver over on this side with the H bridge is for four motors, not two, and that's sort of complicated things. The beauty of it is that it can handle the current uh, that we need for these two larger motors because it was made for four motors. So we'll get back to that in just a minute. Now, on our prototype, we have the Arduino Uno located right here in the middle. Connected to that, we have three sonic sensors. One will control distances to the right, the other to the left, and then we have one for the middle. Over here we have our H-bridge and motor driver. And again, this was actually for a Iligu robot that had four different motors, one motor for each wheel, but we'll only be driving two motors. So if you have to invest in a motor driver, I suggest you invest in a motor driver for two wheels that has a larger capacity for current rather than a four motor driver because it was a little difficult and hard to figure out. If you're already an old hand at these, don't worry about it. You can use whatever you like, but just keep in mind uh, there are four inputs on this driver, but only two motors. Now underneath, we can see that this unit just has two drive wheels and sort of a um, spindle wheel in the front that just kind of goes where it's pushed. So all the control right, left, forward, and backward is, is by these four motor wheels. Over here we have our battery, which is about seven and a half volts. And all of that tied together will allow this robot base to just be autonomous. So what we'll do next is take a look at how it functions, um, having uploaded code, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so while we're working on those other parts of the robot project, let's take a look at what I'm going to do to whiten the corroded old 80s product. Over time, the whiteness of those plastics turns gray or yellow, and there's an easy way to remove that yellowing, although it's time consuming. So right, what we have here is my rig for whitening. Now, uh, this is just a bin that I picked up that um, I can do the whitening in, and it allowed me to put my blue lights uh, right in top of the lids. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a blue light radiation chamber that allows me to irradiate the um, parts to get them white, regardless of what the weather is like outside. Now, a lot of people on YouTube do whitening by just... Um, taking their plastic parts and putting them out in the sun with their bleaching solution. So, the solution you're going to need is volume 40. Uh, you can pick this up at any beauty supply shop and sometimes at a salon. And this is the stuff they use to bleach hair. This is a very, very powerful um, hydrogen peroxide solution. And you can get it either in a liquid or a sort of a cream and I got it in the cream because that will allow me to paint the parts on. I just, if you can see in here, I just painted this on to each piece that needs to be whitened and then I put it into the blue light, cover it up for several hours. I have two different blue lights I picked up on Amazon. Cover that up and then try not to stare at it because that light is really not good for your eyes at all. 
Um, and then you can just let that bake um, and repeat as necessary to get the whiteness that you need. So I think these are on their last cycle. And when they're finished, I'll have just about everything I need to start building the robot's body nice and crisp and clean. So now it's time to drill the holes to install the sonic sensors permanently. So I've used an old acrylic mount to just size up the holes on the outside so that I can figure out where to put my pilot holes. And once I have those in, I can start to gradually increase the diameter of the holes until they fit my sonic sensor. Because so I want those pointing right out the bottom, but embedded in the base of the robot instead of just stuck to the outside. So, time to start drilling. Okay, so not perfect, but not bad. Um, I don't have the best tools um, and measuring devices, so I uh, did the best I could with cardboard templates and just some ruler measurements. You may be able to perfect a little more, get everything aligned more properly, uh, but this is good enough. These sensors are largely out of sight on the bottom of the robot and uh, might even blacken over the um, silver circles just to kind of make them blend in a little more with the gray because you really don't need to know they're there. Um, and the point is for the robot to look like he's smarter than he is and so we don't really want to give away all of his secrets. So maybe I'll just sort of blend those out, but they look good enough. I wish I had gotten a little better alignment, uh, but I didn't um, as far as lining them up um, top and bottom, left to right, but it is what it is. Uh, if I ever get back to it and have better measuring tools, maybe I'll use a different base and redrill it. But for now, this is what we're going to go with. Um, and that works. These sensors just kind of fit right in there and I'm going to use hot glue in the back just to reinforce them. But that's after I start the wiring. So before we do that, uh, let's check in on all the whitening of the plastic pieces and see how that went. And once your parts are done, you'll want to rinse them in warm water and maybe take that paintbrush to use it to get all of the um, hydrogen peroxide crud out of the cracks. I took as many electronics and wires off as I could because I know I'll cause corrosion with the hydrogen peroxide um, if I touch it, and of course by cleaning it with water, um, you're going to have that problem as well. And the cleaned part should come out looking nice and smooth once you get all the water off of it. This one hasn't gone through its final bath. It's a little bit on the yellow side. It's going to take another, um, uh, another couple hours under the, the irradiation to um, get that clean and uh, make sure you wear gloves. Uh, this stuff will just eat right through your skin. It's really powerful hydrogen peroxide and it just burns the heck out of your skin and will damage it. So you probably should wear uh, work gloves like medical gloves or uh, industrial gloves just to make sure you're not getting that on your skin. It's nasty stuff and if you get it in your eye, you'll never forget it. So make sure you're wearing gloves and maybe eye protection. And that'll take all of that yellowing out of your plastics. Your 1980s plastics make them look shiny and new. Uh, and in the case of the Roby, it doesn't even hurt the stickers, although I do try to avoid uh, these stickers up here uh, because they will fade somewhat. The metal stickers uh, throughout the robot are not affected by the, the um, bleaching solution and that process. So um, it's safe to do that other than on this sticker, which I'm just going to be a little bit careful of. So that's that. I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, I found wrapped up in the wheel here is some tinsel from a Christmas tree. <laughs> I'm going to bet you that that tinsel is from Christmas morning, the year this robot was unwrapped and taken out of its box and has been on there ever since. Further, uh, confirming my assumption that these things got very little use after they were opened. Probably run until New Year's, and that was it back in the box. Uh, but I thought that was cool. That's been there for a good 30-some years, 30 to 35 years, wrapped up in the axle. Okay, so now I'm working on the body and trying to figure out where I'm going to put everything. Now, originally, when I started this project, I thought that I was going to sort of hollow out the drawer like this, as I discussed, and then just have sort of an open tray that we could pop out and, and use to access everything, meaning the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. But I've changed my mind. This is the drawer as it would be in the um, Roby. This is the old tape deck. And the tape deck was held together and inside this compartment here. So all the electronics and gears and pulleys for the tape deck were in here. Now this is carefully integrated into this top deck that's up here. Okay, there's this top deck 
and that enables this sliding mechanism. Okay, so that's separate from this drawer. So what I did with this drawer is I sort of just cut this entire section out and then thought I'd use that for a drawer, but I'm second guessing that now. I don't like the way it looks, but more importantly, it does take away from Roby's original, original aesthetic, which was sort of a tape deck. Now, I have no intention of leaving this as a tape deck, but as it turns out, I can fit the Arduino and Raspberry Pi pretty nicely right here uh, in the opening where the old push buttons were for the tape player. So I've decided what I'm gonna do is just razor knife and cut out the tape deck and see if that leaves me enough room to access everything without destroying the entire drawer mechanism, which leads to problems when I try to reassert it to the top, uh, top tray. Um, so that would look like, if I take the bottom off, I could have access to the um, Arduino input and with a little bit of shaving, I can also do the same thing with the Raspberry Pi side to side. And then I don't have to worry about where I'm going to plug things in when I want to reprogram Roby. He's going to need a lot of programming once he's put together. So that's an option. We're going to try that. I've taken a razor knife and scored all the way around the old tape deck, and we'll see if I can pop that out and leave everything else intact, which would be great. And then we'll find out if I have enough room to actually wire things in there. Well, I don't think I could ask for much better than that. As you can see, I'd be able to fit the Arduino and Raspberry Pi side to side. I have enough room to sort of install everything. The speaker and button, they'll be removed, but for now they're still attached for programming purposes. And all I have to do is uh, boost the Arduino and Raspberry Pi up off the floor a bit, which is good for ventilation, to make them line up nicely with the old uh, button slot. And that will make it so I can access everything. And then I can relabel up here. I'll take some um, acetone and just remove all of that and relabel. But the drawer will now be functional. And I think I have enough room to do some wiring and sort of tuck some wires back there. So this will work. And it's a lot less effort than I thought I was going to need to do something like this drawer system where I had to worry about uh, actually cutting through things and breaking things. And then, of course, how to fill it in and make it look aesthetically pleasing. That takes care of that. Now the mystery still remains what to do up here with the old clock and programming window on Roby Senior. So this area up here hasn't really been addressed yet and I'm not sure what to do with it um, from an aesthetic standpoint. Um, certainly uh, all of my um, PC boards will be up here. Everything's going to sort of um, be rooted in this area. I'll have computers and controls down here, but this area here is going to be where everything sort of jumps from uh, different boards into the power and, and the uh, ground and so forth. Uh, but it's not accessible, so this is going to be an area where I'm not going to have easy access to unless they take everything apart. Therefore, that leads me to wonder what to do about this, um, what purpose it's going to serve. Now, one thing I do know is that one of the sensors that are in the base, uh, one of the sonic sensors, does need to go up here. Um, and so I'll probably make a new window or at least a piece of plastic drilled out for the sensor base um, so that I can put the sensor in there. Now, we're also going to eventually add a camera uh, with facial recognition, things like that. So I'm not sure if I'm going to put those in the head or if they can go in here. But this is sort of the mystery right now as to what to do with this area. As I said, there needs to be a sensor here for the forward distance. Uh, in the base, we had the uh, right and left sensors uh, down by the floor, but we want our forward sensor to be up here higher so that Roby knows that he can't do things like climb under chairs and tables and things like that. I'd like to put one in the head, but the sonic sensor is just a little bit too big uh, to fit anywhere on the head that I would actually um, approve of it aesthetically. So that's next, and what I need to do is start wiring the Arduino directly to the base. Uh, that's going to be done with um, just some, um, some connection wires um, going to hard solder the sensors right in. That's going to make it a lot easier to organize um, and then start uploading the autonomy software. So that's where we are. Once that's done, I'll figure out what's going to go up here, um, what we're going to do with this front piece, install that sensor, and we'll be building now from the ground up. So we're making some progress and the code is coming. I promised the code. I said we'd do some programming in video number two. Uh, but we're not going to, uh, because the program that I have, while it's uh, sufficient, it needs work. And uh, so I will be putting that uh, up very shortly. 
but it's not a finished project. So whatever code I give you right now isn't going to be enough. So um, with a little patience, we'll get to the end of this project and perfect that code. And I promise you'll have something you could just you know, download and use as is if you follow these directions um, somewhat closely. So uh, next time, we'll be hardwiring everything together and uh, watching Roby actually do some robot stuff for the first time.